we have just been listening to Sea Anemone from Poplin Island. And I want to talk about this piece because it's a very atmospheric piece and it's about grade three level or early intermediate. It's quite a simple piece to play, although it does look very complicated. The left hand only has two chords, C, G and A, all white notes. And then just above that, the three black notes and D flat. The right hand is a little bit more to do. We have two chords, D flat and E flat, and then D and E, just above that. And at the beginning, the white note and black note chords come together. And then when we reach bar nine, the two white notes and the two black notes come together. The right hand also has to play E flat and G flat here on the piano, and then a D minor shape, so it's D, E, F to A, and D, E, F to B. And again, that is all that the right hand has to do. This piece is a very good exercise in, in making sure that counting is taking place. Uh, many of my pupils are very resistant to counting, but you need to be able to count very simple what four in a bar to be able to play the first eight bars of this piece. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you can't guess that, so it's, it's a very good way of making sure that counting is taking place. It's also an exercise in freedom of movement of the right hand, going from here to either G flat or E flat. So we get nice fluid movement, and especially in bar 13, where we have to move on the second beat of the bar. And we can't leave it to the last minute. This piece is also pedaled throughout, and there is legato pedaling involved. And maybe you don't think of introducing legato pedaling so early on. I certainly introduced pedal right from the very beginning and legato pedaling early on too. And it's a good piece to introduce legato pedaling as each chord comes at the beginning of the bar and there's plenty of time to up, down and then do whatever happens. Now we've just had a look at bars 9 to 12 and you can see that there are quintuplets introduced. So again that might seem rather advanced, but if we think about them as semiquavers at the speed of the beat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we play the first four. These are the white note shapes. And that's roughly the speed that we want to play this at, but we're going to add an extra E at the top. And it's a very nice, easy flowing movement and not difficult to do. And now we just had a look at bar 17 and 18. And that very same movement is going to go up in three sets of octaves. I find that pupils want to stress the final note. But this piece is about water and there are no sharp edges in water. You can think of the flowing, easy movement of water. And just let it flow. It's a very good exercise in phrasing at the top there. We've just looked at the end of the piece and we can see that there are quintuplets and then four semiquavers following on after each other. So these are not difficult to do if we just think about the beat. And then the final rising figure. As a natural writ built into it. 